This little thing, which looks a bit like an obese flash drive, is actually a Windows 10 PC. So what we're going to try today is use GeForce Now to turn it into a 1080p 60 frame per second gaming beast. Straight off the bat, <laughs> I don't think this is going to work because I did a previous video where I tried to game using one of these little pocket PCs and well, needless to say, it didn't work very well. It was a little bit like trying to game on a thermostat. And then, to get around the really bad local performance, I tried using that whole Steam game streaming service. You know the one where you render a game on a powerful beast system and then stream it over to a little weakling system. That didn't work either. The frame rates were still very bad and there was horrendous input lag. So I don't know if GeForce Now is gonna be any better. Just on a quick side note around the whole GeForce Now thing, I am going to occasionally accidentally refer to it as GeForce Go, but just ignore that. Pretend I'm one of those absent fathers that occasionally forgets the names of his children. Before we actually see how well this little pocket PC can or can't run GeForce Now, let's just have a look at the hardware that this little beast is packing. As far as the CPU goes, it's got an Intel Atom Z8350 in it, which is a 1.8 GHz quad-core CPU that also has Intel integrated graphics. It's got 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, which actually makes it the higher-end version of this little pocket PC. As far as I.O. goes, it's only a little bit better than the average Apple device. It's got an HDMI port to plug it into a monitor, and then it's got two USB ports, one of which is USB 3, and then it's got a little micro SD card. Just a couple more notes before we get into the actual gaming tests. Now, first off, the version of GeForce Now that I'm using for this video is actually the free one because A, I'm cheap, and B, I'm just curious to see how well it works. And then finally, in regards to my internet, I've got a fast fiber connection, which is a symmetrical 300 megabit per second line with very low latency. And there's actually a GeForce Now server pretty close to where I live. So ping is not a big issue here. And with that, let's start off by seeing how well the little pocket PC can run games all by itself. We're gonna use Half-Life 2 for the first test because that's kind of the newest game I can remotely get running on the system. And as you'll see, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't run very well. On a quick note, bear in mind while looking at this gameplay footage, because of various factors, it's really difficult to show things like input lag and big frame dips on camera. So the footage looks a lot better than it actually feels to play and looks in person. See, that's the problem, right? The average FPS looks reasonable, but there's this, this stutter in the game. You got this stutter, which is the problem. And I mean, you can, you, you can try different parts of the game and you always get it. If Half-Life Alex doesn't start with you on a train, I'm going to be just completely outraged. So the verdict is clearly that it runs Half-Life 2 like a 23 year old cat with no legs. So let's move over to GeForce Now and see if that changes this experience. Now, the first thing that worries me a bit about potential GeForce Now uh, performance with this PC is this. It can't even really render the GeForce Now app properly, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Here we have our first attempt at trying to run GeForce Now on this little pocket PC. And as you can see, if anything, it's worse than before. Visually, it looks better, but whenever you move your mouse around, there's this huge frame drop. However, I think there's a way that we can make this whole game streaming thing a bit less demanding on the Pocket PC. Considering the fact that I have a pretty fast internet connection, GeForce Go is streaming the gameplay at a very high bitrate. So maybe if we drop the resolution and bitrate, it's going to be a little bit easier for the Pocket PC to deal with on the fly. This is definitely better. It's not perfect by any means. You can see there's still quite a lot of stutter here and it just, it looks pretty terrible now. I don't, I still don't think I'd consider this playable by any stretch of the imagination. And this is indoors, you know, there's not too much going on here. 
So this is Half-Life 2 running at 720p locally on the system. It, it seems to be a little bit smoother than when you're streaming it, which is quite funny because it means that running Half-Life 2 locally is is less demanding than than encoding and decoding all of the all of the information that you need to stream gameplay. So what I'm going to do now is see if one of the more officially supported games uh, works any better. So we're going to try Destiny 2. Maybe maybe they have like server optimization for this kind of thing. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I love that you have the option to add a Neanderthal brow to your to your robot character. Oh yeah, that one looks pretty cool. I don't know how any of this works. Do I do I have a weapon yet? I mean, it's running Destiny 2, which is way better than the local hardware would ever be able to do. But there is still quite a lot of very big stutters. Oh, that's a huge jump. Oh, do I need to go there? Uh, yeah, so this is running at 720p currently. I guess you could get away with playing it like this. Because uh, the average frame rate isn't too bad. It's just these stutters, you know? It, it, it really throws you out of the experience. And there's actually a reasonable amount of input lag as well. Yeah, see, look at that. That's really, that's really not ideal. Uh, it, it, you can feel that it, it runs fairly smooth when you're not giving it a lot of inputs. But the moment that you start moving around, it it's the little pocket PC just can't handle it. If you have no other option for, for, for gaming setups, this is not too bad, especially considering the fact that you're not paying for it. This is like the free service. Like, look, you know, you can still hit targets and stuff like that, you know? Oh, I need to run away. Although, if you're going to be doing any actual PvP against, like, real human players, you're going to be at a massive disadvantage. The final thing that I want to do is remove Wi-Fi from the equation, because I think that may be kneecapping the little pocket PC a bit. So let's try some wired internet. How we're going to go about this is I'm going to use this little Ethernet to USB 3 adapter and plug it straight into the USB 3 port on the Pocket PC. And as you can see here, it's starting to look a little bit like Apple's wet dream over here with all of these dongles. I mean, this is pretty promising. Like, it's feeling a bit better here. Let's see what happens when we go into an actual raid here or match or whatever it's called. This is definitely better. Look at that. Yeah, again, I mean, frame drops are a bit of an issue, but look at that! Apparently, the D-Link USB 3.0 gigabyte Ethernet adapter is a complete beast! Oh, yeah, this is way better. I, I, I would go as far as to say that this is playable. So now, I think what we need to do is try and push it to 1080p. Because this is at 720p, and as you can tell, it looks, it looks pretty rubbish. Let's double the bitrate and then take it up to 1080p and yeah, let's see what that does. Here we have Destiny 2 running at 1080p, moderately playable on a tiny little pocket PC. That's pretty cool. Where did that beastie go? Oh, here we go. Now that we've gotten the Pocket PC to a point where we can get a reasonable gaming result at 1080p on a demanding game like Destiny 2, let's try a couple more newer titles. Let's try Fortnite and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I mean, this is playable! This is even more playable than the Destiny 2 setup. Oh no, don't hurt me! How do you sprint? Okay, I'm, I'm already down. Oh, Thunder Sky. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? This is someone right there! Or do I just not know how this game works? Here comes Thunder Sky. Oh yeah, he, I think he wants me to come around. Oh, no, never mind. This is not too bad. Look at that. Like, there's a little bit of input lag and it stutters a little bit. But do you know what? That doesn't matter. Considering the fact that this little pocket PC can't even run Half-Life 2 on its own, this is this is really pretty impressive. In conclusion, as you can tell by my eyes, allergies are already starting to kick my ass here, and it's not even really spring yet. And then, on a slightly less important note, 
I'm actually really impressed with this little pocket PC. It went way better than I thought it was going to. Okay, I still wouldn't use it for like competitive PvP kind of situations because there is perceptible input lag and it, it isn't an amazing gaming experience, but if you don't have many other options, this, is, this isn't too bad. And with that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe, check out my Twitch stream, which I'll have linked in the description below. I stream on Saturdays and it's a really good time. You can come check it out. Uh, I've got a bunch of other social media linked down there as well. And until the next video, bye-bye.